Hey guys, it's Chris. We're back with the 1200 and today I finally got my keyboard membrane in from RWAP Software in the United Kingdom. That's rwapsoftware.co.uk. I purchased this from uh, sellmyretro.com. They have a bunch of stuff on there and it was 22 pound 57 for me about 35 US dollars. It came in this cardboard package and I already opened it and it seems to be quite nice. So here's the new membrane for the 1200. Brand new 2020 uh, creation date. All the carbon is nice and new and the, no damages to my traces. Well, I did off camera a couple days ago. I took this. It's a conductive wire pen. I did the traces and some of the paint spilled out and I kind of got it all over the place, but I took a knife and swiped it again. And as you can see, my GoTech screen has been painted. It's a little whiter than the case. The paint that I used was just some Rust-Oleum satin white. Maybe after some retro braiding, it might come back to life. So what I want to do is I want to get the keyboard out. I have not screwed in uh, anything in yet. Oh, come on. These tabs. I have my GoTech wires. Uh, as you can see, heat strength in here. This was not connected, so I'm just going to pull the keyboard out. So with that, I'm going to slide it back here so we can turn this over. So as you've seen before, I have this little magnet, <laughs> magnetic, magnetic uh, bucket here. All right, so uh, I'm going to magnetize my little tiny screwdriver here with a rare earth hard drive magnet from something that's been here for a long time. So let's get these screws out and fast forward. Here we go. Twenty-six screws later, we're going to ever so carefully push in on this and let this old membrane slide out. And I will show you my attempted uh, repair it was right here. You can see the white. I didn't do a really good job on it, and I'm sure I could probably fix this. It's actually on the other side with some better magnification, but it was so sliced. It was so sliced right here. I did manage to get it opened a little bit better, and I almost got it fixed. But I think I just, since the paint blob smeared, I couldn't really do a good job with getting the traces. I will save this for another day. So now we're going to put on the brand new one, and I am really going to check and make sure this doesn't have any crud in it. So we're going to take some Q-tip real quick, and just a little... IPA and I gotta get a little pile of turds out right here and in the space bar it was really crusty and I should have removed the keys by now but I didn't Ooh, look at that it's like dookie so I'll do another the other end here I just gotta get this it's just really bad I don't know what this I don't know what this stuff is was I think it was like a soda spilt on the keyboard it happens. Kids get a hold of these and uh, it's just, they're just totally goobered up. My F10 key, which is right here, is, is just busted. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that, but since a lot of the WHD load games use F10, I want to take F9 out and it's spring and I'm going to swap them and it's kind of crusty in between the keys, and yes, I should remove them all. I'm just so happy to have a keyboard membrane. I'm not worried about it. So, spring, spring. F9 is still good, so F9 will become, whoops, F10. Spring on, and replace the key correctly. The broken plunger I am going to reinsert just so I have 
a key on F9 that does move around horridly, but yeah, it's, it's a little screwed up, but it functions. Now I have a working F10 for WHD load. If I choose to do so in the future, we will take our nice membrane and move the alcohol out of the way. Look at that alignment. Perfect. You couldn't ask for a more perfect membrane. Make sure it is over all the little holes, mainly the two. That's good. Now we can take our metal for shizzle. Get this out of the way for just a moment. Carefully insert our brand new cable through. Line up the tabs. And once again, fast forward through 26 screw reinsertions. Let's go. Twenty-seven screws. I said twenty-six. So with that, we will move this membrane on top of the other Amiga down there. And now we can, whoa, we can break our new membrane. Now we can actually install the keyboard. Lifting this up and carefully first sitting this in. I will then insert the brand new ribbon well, I don't know if that's correct. But let's see what happens. Let me find it. Amiga test kit. All right, so we're in the Amiga uh, yeah, test kit ADF that I've downloaded from uh, GitHub here for Amiga stuff. We're going to run the keyboard test. Keyboard. Here we go. Now my F9, whoops, will not work. Oop, and 10 and backspace. Yay! So let's see, control left alt to go back to the main menu. And I believe I have my audio fixed. So let's listen for that. That's F5. And we'll do... So... Yay! How did I get my audio fixed? I'll show you. You see these two capacitors right here? I replaced these, which was a royal pain in the butt. I was so worried to burn my circuit board with my hot air gun, I put captain tape all around everything. Probably too much captain tape. Hot aired them off, uh, put them back on with hot air, uh, bumped, the, bumped the tips with solder, with my soldering iron, and we're back in business. That kind of wraps up Project 1200. I'm going to carefully push all of these wires back in. My Super Ghetto floppy connector. This is really tight. And my keyboard lights can go underneath of the keyboard and around the GoTech as best I can tuck them in. I usually stick my finger in over here and kind of drag it back. Now, You think Project 1200 is done? Not exactly. Because I have not completed the belly slot upgrade yet, this only has two megs of RAM. So I really can't do a lot. That's why I put my colors in uh, crap mode because the 314 ROMs, I have an update disk in, but it's not gonna be used because this is update for 3141. I have the ROMs in. I just copied the icon and workbench library over to the workbench 3.1 uh, libs directory so I could have the, it booting without asking for a disk. So this is 45194, which is workbench 3.1.
And uh, 46143 is Kickstart 3.14. So I need to install the correct workbench on here. But with only a 4 gig compact flash, I am going to update that to something larger, like one of my SanDisk Extreme 32s that look like this. It's one of the 32 gig cards. I will partition a small uh, 2 gig-ish, 3 gig-ish uh, SIS or DH0 workbench. But for now, the keyboard is working. We're going to touch more on the 1200 when I get the other items that I've ordered. I am trying to stay off eBay at night. That's not going so well. And we'll touch back later. So thank you for watching as always. Thank you for your support. I hope you learned something.